Hey everyone, it's Monday, time for a new audio. As previous weeks, I will go more into self-image and I will read things from Psycho-Cybernetics and also from Neville. I will start with a practice exercise from Psycho-Cybernetics. Keep in the back of your mind the teachings of Neville and when you listen attentively, you will hear what the secret is to feeling it real. And you know that you need to feel it real inside and able to experience it outside. That's how life works. Only usually you're not conscious of it working that way. And that's why you're here to learn how to use your human power consciously. Okay, here goes. Practice exercise. Hold a picture of yourself long and steadily enough in your mind's eye and you will be drawn toward it, said Dr. Harry Emerson Fosdick, the prominent liberal minister. Picture yourself vividly as defeated and that alone will make victory impossible. Picture yourself vividly as winning and that alone will contribute immeasurably to success. Great living starts with a picture held in your imagination of what you would like to do or be. Your present self-image was built on your own imagination pictures of yourself in the past, which grew out of interpretations and evaluations that you placed on experience. Now you are to use the same method to build an adequate self-image that you previously used to build an inadequate one. Set aside a period of 30 minutes each day when you can be alone and undisturbed. Relax and make yourself as comfortable as possible. Now close your eyes and exercise your imagination. Many people find they get better results if they imagine themselves sitting before a large motion picture screen and imagine that they are seeing a motion picture of themselves. The important thing is to make these pictures as vivid and as detailed as possible. You want your mental pictures to approximate actual experience as much as possible. The way to do this is to pay attention to small details, sights, sounds, objects in your imagined environment. One of my patients was using this exercise to overcome her fear of the dentist. She was unsuccessful until she began to notice small details in her imagined picture. The smell of the antiseptic office, the smell of antiseptic in the office, the feel of the leather on the, on the chair arms, the sight of the dentist's well manicured nails as his hands approached her mouth, etc. Details of the imagined environment are all important in this exercise because for all practical purposes, you're creating a practice experience. And if the imagination is vivid enough and detailed enough, your imagination practice is equivalent to an actual experience insofar as your nervous system is concerned. Just a second here. Everyone that knows Neville knows how he talks about that uh, this baseball experiment. Um, that how you can distinguish between the feeling, the sensation of a baseball and of a tennis ball and of a golf ball, and that that will uh, greatly help your to, to um, strengthen your imagination. Here, Dr. Maxwell Maltz talks about looking at a motion picture screen. Neville says that you have to think of it from the first person point of view. Potato, potato, in my opinion, the thing is, you have to be able to feel it real and to feel that you're the person that's experiencing it. So however you see that in front of you, be it a motion picture, be it you looking through your eyes or you looking at you doing something, it doesn't matter. The thing is, the thing is, it has to be believable for you. No one can tell you your way. Everyone can only hand you some techniques that have worked for them. You know the truth for you. And if you feel like, yeah, but I don't know what is my truth, 
then go with with which one resonates most with you and you know you know just trust yourself okay let's go on the next important thing to remember is that during this 30 minutes you see yourself acting and reacting appropriately successfully ideally it doesn't matter how you acted yesterday you do not need to try to have faith you will act in the ideal way tomorrow your nervous system will take care of that in time if you continue to practice see yourself acting feeling being as you want to be do not say to yourself I'm going to act this way tomorrow just say to yourself I'm going to imagine myself acting this way now for 30 minutes today imagine how you would feel if you were already the sort of personality you want to be if you have been shy and timid see yourself moving among people with ease and poise and feeling good because of it if you have been fearful and anxious in certain situations see yourself acting calmly and deliberately acting with confidence and courage and feeling expansive and confident because you are this exercise builds new memories or store data into your midbrain and central nervous system it builds a new image of self one more time this sentence this exercise builds new memories or stored data into your midbrain and central nervous system it builds a new image of self after practicing it for a time you will be surprised to find yourself acting differently more or less automatically and spontaneously without trying this is as it should be you do not need to try or make an effort now in order to feel ineffective and act inadequately your present inadequate feeling and doing is automatic and spontaneous because of the memories real and imagined you have built into your automatic mechanism you will find it will work just as automatically on positive thoughts and experiences as on negative ones okay now i will be now i will be reading you uh, something from the neville goddard collection so what i do um, i just open the book i set an intention that i want to read the perfect uh, pages for the message that i'm conveying and it opened here so here we go it's from the law and the promise chapter three turn the wheel backward turn the wheel backward oh let your strong imagination turn the great wheel backward until troy unburn all life is throughout the ages nothing but the continuing solution of a continuous synthetic problem hg wells the perfectly stable or static state is always unattainable the end attained objectively always realizes more than the end the individual originally had in view this in turn creates a new situation of inner conflict needing novel solutions to force man along the path of creative evolution his touch is infinite and lends a yonder to all ends today's events are bound to disturb yesterday's established order the creatively active imagination invariably unsettles a, pre a pre-existing peace of mind. The question may arise as to how, by representing others to ourselves as better than they really were, or mentally rewriting a letter to make it conform to our wish, or by revising the scene of an accident, the interview with the employer and so on, could change what seems to be the unalterable facts of the past but remember my claims for imagining imagining creates reality what it makes it can unmake it is not only conservative building a life from images supplied by memory it is also creatively transformative altering a theme already in being isn't this amazing that everyone just talks about imagination like 
everyone imagination concept of self you can change yourself you can change the past you can change well the future as well because the past and the future are the same they're now what Seth says is the future is just moving really quickly and that's why um, it feels like it's not in the now and the past is moving slower because you've experienced certain things already in the past and they pull on your neurological structure so that's why it feels as something that happened and that is real but the future is just as real if you're able to tune into it okay i hope i'm not confusing you <laughs> i trust i'm not confusing you let's go on um, with the text okay so imagining creates reality what it makes it can unmake it is not only conservative, building a life from images supplied by memory. It is also creatively transformative, altering a theme already in being. The parable of the unjust steward gives the answer to this question. We can alter our world by means of a certain illegal imaginal practice, by means of a mental falsification of the facts. That is, by means of a certain intentional imaginal alteration of that which we have experienced. All this is done in one's own imagination. This is a form of falsehood which is not only this is a form of falsehood which not only is not condemned but is actually approved in the gospel teaching. By means of such a falsehood a man destroys the causes of evil and acquires friends and on the strength of this revision prov proofs judging by the high praise the unjust steward received from his master that is deserving of confidence because imagining creates reality we can carry revision to the extreme and revise a scene that would be otherwise unforgivable we learn to distinguish between man who is all imagination and those states into which he may enter an unjust steward looking at another's distress will represent the other to himself as he ought to be seen. Were he himself in need, he would enter his dream in his imagination and imagine what he would see and how things would seem and how people would act after these things should be. Then in this state, he would fall asleep feeling the way he would expect to feel under such circumstances. Would that all the Lord's people were unjust stewards, mentally falsifying the facts of life to deliver individuals forevermore. For the imaginal change goes forward until at length the altered pattern is realized on the heights of attainment. Our future is our imaginal activity in its creative march. Imagine better than the best you know. To revise the past is to reconstruct it with new content. Man should daily relive the day as he wished he had lived it, revising the scenes to make them conform to his ideals. Okay, so far this part. In other words, just see everything as you would like to see it. Other people, yourself, practice as Dr. Maxwell Malt says, 30 minutes a day, just sit down, relax yourself, Oh yeah, there's one more piece I wanted to read from um, about that exercise because someone gives a tip what happens or how you should um, practice it if you feel that it doesn't really work. So, also from Psycho-Cybernetics. Some people will follow the Psycho-Cybernetics principles began with doubts that they could spend 30 minutes a day picturing who they want to be. They also had difficulty visualizing a goal clearly. Finally, when they, when they did form mental pictures, they found that their minds would wander and they judged themselves harshly for this. Essentially, like anything else, getting good at picturing who you want to be requires practice. As Olympic champion and coach Dan Gable said, the only place you start at the top is digging a hole. Just because the mental imagery isn't clear when you begin does not mean it won't get clearer, more vivid, more detailed and more powerful each time you practice. 
When you begin, it's good to scan your body for tension and begin to consciously relax your head, torso, waist, legs, and so on. And as strange as it may sound, allow yourself to smile into your brain and body, which greatly helps you relax. As you begin to relax, concentrate on breathing deeply. Follow your inhale and your exhale. Allow positive energy to enter you as you exhale the negative. After you've done this, you can go back into your past and find a successful memory, an occasion when you did something well. Again, this could be as simple as tying your shoes for the first time or writing your name in school. When it happens is irrelevant. How big the success was doesn't matter either. All that matters is that the memory triggers a positive, happy, feel-good experience in you right now. Replay and relive the positive memory. Then go into the future and picture how you want to be with the same feeling you felt in the past. Add emotion to what you're seeing in your mind's eye. If you find your mind wandering, don't get upset or be too hard on yourself. Relax and picture again. Each time your mind wanders, bring yourself back. No worries. As for the 30 minute time, you can begin experiencing positive results in five or 10 minutes a day. Visualizations that last no longer than 10 to 15 minutes can result in extraordinary changes. The biggest key is to practice every day. Once you've established this habit and you're seeing and feeling the results, it's easy to find more time. This is it. And it links in with mental diets too. So enjoy listening to this audio again. If you plan to enjoy your imaginal practices, well, actually your conscious imaginal practices, because we're imagining all day, every day. We just are not really aware of it. And I wish you a beautiful day, lots of success, and I see you next week. Ciao!